Hello everyone. I thought I'd give an update to my recent video that I did just a few days ago about the New York City apartment building collapse that occurred on December 11th, 2023, around 4 p.m. So I had an initial video and more information's come to light. I also wanted to address key themes from viewer comments. I appreciate all the comments I received. That, that video uh, had a lot of interest. And so I wanna show you additional footage that's been obtained and update you on what's happening with the investigation, as well as with other parties that are involved with this uh, building supervision and permitting. So this building's located at 1915 Billingsley Terrace in the Bronx. The collapse of the corner of the seven story building occurred in a matter of few seconds. Fire department personnel were on scene virtually immediately and they combed the wreckage for any injured or trapped individuals and fortunately there was nobody killed in this incident I, I understand there were maybe a few minor injuries from debris striking people so let's look at this footage it appears to have come from a city bus camera some of you pointed out in the comments that if you go to google street view you'll see a prominent crack in this corner of the building that collapsed which corresponds to the location that failed here recently now this building, you can see all the scaffolding around it, was in the process of having restoration work done at the exterior of the building. So the evening of this collapse, Richard Konigsberg was the engineer indicated in the news report by the city. He was involved with prior inspections as well as this repair effort. And he was quoted as saying that repair effort was being done to only address the facade and there were no structural aspects to problems with the building and he suspected an issue with the columns that was unrelated to his work on the building. So for my video, I was quoting Mr. Konigsberg for the basis of what happened to this building. And shortly thereafter too, the city of New York's uh, building inspection department corroborated what Konigsberg was saying in that the work being done on the building was strictly facade work, non-structural work. But uh, boy, has that story changed, and I'll give you an update on that here shortly. But again, a number of you pointed out that this looked like a load-bearing wall or at least a load-bearing column and not merely a facade, which a facade would be a decorative element that doesn't support the building directly. So, of course, the blame game has already begun. I'm going to show you this short video segment. In the wake of that terrifying building collapse in New York City this week, officials are now blaming an engineer who reported the building unsafe but said nothing was imminently hazardous. The engineer is accused of misdiagnosing a crucial column that was holding up part of the structure, thinking it was only decorative. So that little segment sets up this interview conducted by CBS News, the local news station of Jimmy Odo, who is the Department of Buildings Commissioner. So presumably oversees the Department of Building Inspections as well. What we have found, what the early evidence shows is so troubling that we at the Department of Buildings believe that we need to take some steps vis-a-vis -vis the engineer who submitted the facade report, who did the repair drawings, who approved the work that was undertaken. And now here's a picture of Mr. Konigsberg, the professional engineer. He's listed on his website as having 20 years experience. Again, his name has been cited in multiple sources, but primarily the quotes that were given Monday night in his interview with the city. All right, here's the next clip that shows the city's basis for their rush to judgment. Video that our sister agencies uh, have obtained showing work at that pier on that day. And that work included removing uh, bricks from that pier and that work was predicated on a fundamental a basic but crucial and catastrophic mistake and that was believing that that pier was decorative and not load-bearing so again i want to read to you an excerpt from this monday interview by this news outlet with uh, richard konigsberg in an interview with the city monday evening the engineer richard konigsberg said that based on his observations at the site, it appeared that the outer column collapsed, likely at the first floor level, bringing down the rest of the floors above. This would be a structural flaw, not a problem with the facade, he said. 
There's no reason from what I've seen to expect that the work we were doing on the facade had anything to do with this. He said, noting that all the facade work at the building was taking place from the second floor up and that the facade work on the corner was finished in late September. So also there were conflicting news reports. Some eyewitnesses claimed that the failure started at the ground floor level. Others said it started at an upper story. So in essence, government officials in the city of New York have decided to essentially ruin this engineer's practice after a, just a few days of investigation. And what we can do is seek to suspend this engineer's uh, ability to do facade inspections for 15 days, and we will go to oath and make the case why we are so troubled by it. What we can do is reach out to our colleagues on the state. The state education department licenses these professional engineers yeah. and say, hey, take a look at this. This wouldn't impact Mr. Konigsberg alone. His firm employs a number of engineers on their staff. So if the city basically precludes them from doing any more building inspections, which is a big part of what they do, apparently, based on what's listed on their website, there's not going to be much work, I suspect, for these engineers. And I doubt they're going to be getting much new work, given the cloud of suspicion over their, their company. So the building commissioner said that this Konigsberg Engineering was involved in over 300 building inspections in the city of New York, and they're going to review all of them with an outside or presumably independent engineer. So they go on to suggest that they need to review all 40 buildings that are owned by this individual who owned the building that had the corner collapse on Monday. And uh, perhaps most broadly, uh, that is to look at the holdings of uh, this owner as best as we can identify. Mm. Uh, I think we have identified to date around 40 plus buildings. We've already gotten eyes on some of them. That are owned by the same owner. Owned by the same owner. So we've, we've gotten in inspectors out in the field since this incident. They also are suggesting that they need to investigate the contractor involved as well. And I think what we're obligated to do to provide some level of confidence uh, to New Yorkers is look at all the work previously done by this engineer, look at the work in the queue at this agency, um, but also look at the work. I think there are seven projects being undertaken by this contractor. So you'll notice from these clips, what's conspicuously absent is any suggestion that the building department in New York City had any responsibility in this collapse. News reports indicated that there were a number of building citations issued by the Department of Building Inspections for damage to this building. And apparently a repair plan had been submitted to the city. It's not clear to me at this point whether that plan was approved or the city essentially allowed these repairs to go forward without completing the review. I'm not clear on that point. But what is clear is that the city has pointed the finger at everyone involved with this project except the building department officials. That just shows you how quickly these situations become political. And again, I, I can't stress it enough that how early on we are in, the best, in this investigation and, and folks have a right to due process um, and these investigations can go on for weeks and months. But the fundamental, the very basic, it, it's, it wasn't a close call. It shouldn't have been a close call. This should have been obvious that this pier was load bearing and that misjudgment and then work done based on that misjudgment um, is really concerning. Now, as for Konigsberg, his website indicates he's had 20 years of experience and he's a PE, professional engineer. Based on my research, there's no structural engineering requirement or even possibility of getting a structural engineering license is not offered in the state of New York, unlike many other states. So again, government officials are jumping all over this engineer with both feet. I'm not suggesting that he's blameless here. I'm suggesting that, you know, the city's talking out of both sides of their mouth. They're talking about a uh, due process that could take weeks or months, and at the same time, looking to revoke his ability to inspect buildings in the city of New York and uh, they also appear to be wanting to file a complaint with the state 
licensing authority to presumably revoke his statewide license. Now contrast this with the Surfside collapse from a few years ago in Florida. There was a structural engineer, not just a professional engineer, but a licensed structural engineer in the state of Florida who conducted a building inspection and noted structural damage in the building. And a couple of years later, he was involved or going to be involved with the building's 40 year recertification requirement. And uh, the repairs still had not been completed for, for anything that he noted in his report. And also I pointed out in a previous video that this engineer essentially buried the more impactful aspects of his inspection relative to observed structural damage to I think page seven, six or seven in a nine page report. So nothing was jumping out in terms of his presentation that this could be a serious problem, this could be a life threatening problem, you need to fix it right away or you need to get people out of the building. None of that happened. And that building collapse killed 98 people. They were asleep in their beds in the middle of the night and the building came crashing down in, in mere seconds. So the reason I point that out, it's apparently the state of Florida never investigated this individual's involvement as an engineer through the state licensure board. A media outlet had requested whether the state board would in fact, uh, whether the state board would in fact investigate this engineer and they would not provide any comment. And in my research, I haven't found anything that would indicate that this engineer involved with the Surfside collapse uh, suffered any enforcement action or investigation as a result. Yet we have New York City just pouncing on this individual, essentially scapegoating him. And again, he may have uh, serious errors on his part and may ha have a significant role in the responsibility for what happened. I'm not suggesting otherwise, but I'm also saying an investigation hasn't been completed. We don't know, for example, did he recommend a certain sequence or type of repairs that weren't followed? And again, what was the role of the city? I mean, does the city allow, allow people to just do repairs willy nilly? Uh, you know, the building uh, commissioner points out that it was so obvious that this was structural damage. Well, where was the city? I mean, this crack appeared in Google Street View. It looks like a very old crack. I don't know when the Street View image was, but it was some time before this collapse. Certainly someone with the city could have noticed this and done something about it. So again, let me know your thoughts about all this. You know, I've done a number of videos about major collapses involving bridges and buildings. And the common theme is that the engineer is almost held to account exclusively, even though these are typically system wide issues involving contractors, design engineers, building officials, and, and others. And yet, uh, you know, as a professional engineer, you got, the, you got the target on your back because you have a tremendous responsibility to society to get this stuff right. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you'd like to check out my list of the major civil engineering disasters for the last 100 years, there's a link in the description. Also, we're offering channel memberships to those who would like to further support the channel. Again, I appreciate all the comments and interaction. The, the uh, membership is just another way to support the channel. And thanks for watching everyone. Please stay tuned for future videos.